Welcome. In the Brownie puzzle video, a question arose, in fact it's quite a tricky question. Um, we noticed that rectangles have the property that there's a special point, namely the centre of the rectangle where the diagonals meet, such that any line, straight line through that point, is guaranteed to chop the rectangle to two parts of equal area. So the question arose, are rectangles the only shape with that property? Well the answer is no. Re uh, parallelograms have that property. Regular octagons have that property. Um, so there are definitely shapes out there. So the question is, can we classify them and figure out what common feature they all have? So the question is, again, just to be very clear, suppose we have a polygon with the property that there exists a special point P somewhere in its interior, such that any straight line through that point is guaranteed to chop the polygon into two parts of equal area. No matter which line I draw, what can we say about that polygon? Must it be regular in some kind? Must it have an even number of sides, an odd number of sides? Can we say, what can we say about its sides? What property must it possess? So that's the research question. And I'm going to give away the answer to this video. It's going to take a little bit of work. It's going to take some doing. Um, I'm going to rely on some, some serious math from geometry. But I'm going to answer this question in about three seconds and give away all the answers. So if you want to pause and uh, play with this for yourself, now's the time to do that. All right, here goes. Um, this yellow polygon I've drawn here, I, I can just tell by looking at it, it's not going to do the trick. Because I claim the problem with this guy is, is that, yes, there's certainly a line that goes through the point P and it hits two sides. In fact, I'll call these opposite sides. The sides that are hit, I'll call them opposite. So this line hits this side and hits this side. I claim that if this polygon has the property that any line through P chops in two parts of equal area, then this line better be parallel to that line, which is not in this picture. Moreover, this line better be the same length as this line. They better be congruent or congruent in America. So I claim the only polygons that have this property are the ones that have opposite sides being congruent and parallel, namely like rectangles and squares and parallelograms themselves, and regular even gons, a regular octagon, a regular hexagon. A regular pentagon won't do it, but they don't even have a clear opposite sides. All right, how do we prove this? So I'm going to prove that uh, if a polygon has the property that has this area chopping property, it must have opposite sides congruent and parallel. So let me just get a picture going. I'll draw two sides of the polygon. I know I've drawn them parallel. I don't, I'm not assuming it just yet. And then the polygon keeps going on the left, and the polygon keeps going on the right. If this polygon does indeed have the special point P, the some point P in the interior, we're going to use that fact that it chops the area into two parts of equal, two, the polygon into two parts of equal area. So here's a line through P, and we're told that the left area, whoops, let's make it a pen, is equal to the right area. All right, that's going to be true for any point through P, any line through P. So let me draw another one. Make it a thin line. There we go. That so the area to the left of this thin line equals the area to the left of that. Uh, to the right of that thin line. Well, a little bit of thought then shows for these two lines that the area of this triangle here, which I'll paint yellow, must equal the area of that triangle there. Knowing that those are equal area, I bet that's enough to prove that the top and bottom edges, the opposite edges of this line, must be parallel. And here goes. I'm going to do it in a very strange way. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of work, so first of all, let me get a pen going. All right. First of all, notice that by vertical angles, those two angles are equal. And if this is side A, and that's side B, and the side is length C, and that side length D, I could actually write a formula for these areas. The area of a triangle is half the product of its two sides times the sine of the angle between them. All right, so there's advanced math right there. The area of that yellow triangle is half for the top one, A, B, sine of the angle dot. And the area of this bottom triangle is a half CD sine of the same angle dot. They're the same areas, so right now I know that A times B is the same as C times D. Or if you like, the ratio of uh, B to C is the same as the ratio D to A. All right, that's the little feature I want to use right now. Unfortunately, that's not quite helpful as it stands. And what I'm going to do is something a little weird and draw yet another line going through P. Here it goes. Whoops. I'll make sure it touches. Um, by the same token, 
the area of this pink triangle will be the area the same as the area of that triangle. In fact, the area of the whole pink and yellow on the top is the area of the pink and yellow on the bottom, by the fact that any line cuts the whole area of the polygon in half. Let me label the its edges. Du -du -du -du. Let's call it A, B, C, what are we up to? E, whoops, need a pen. Sorry, E and F. And if I did the same trick with the triangle E, this angle and A, and D and this angle and F, I could bet I could prove that uh, E to F is also D to A. In particular, B to C and E to the F are the same ratio. Namely, this triangle and this triangle have sides coming in the same ratio, and by vertical angles, they have the same angle at the top. So, by the SAS principle in geometry, I've now proven those two pink triangles are actually similar. And in fact, now I can prove that the two yellow triangles are similar and the whole big triangle is similar. In fact, I'll always, I've now proved that I've basically got similar triangles everywhere that I want to think about it in this picture. Great. Now, similar triangles, what does that mean? It means angles match. In particular, maybe where I want to go. This angle here matches this angle here. That is, I've now got one line, another line, and something I can think of as a transversal with the property that one angle angles across the transversal, those alternate interior angles, are congruent. That means the opposite sides must in fact be parallel. Alright, so if a polygon has this property that exists a special point, P, any line through that P that hits opposite sides must be hitting parallel lines. Those opposite sides must be parallel. Alright, um, just as a little point, that means we can't actually have a kink going on. That I can't have a line through P that then changes Hit, hits this other side instead. Because if I had that going on by the same token, we just proved this side must be parallel to that side as well. Well, you can't have a bent line that's parallel and parallel. So basically, these lines have to always hit um, and, and not go around a corner. So there really is some sense true opposite edges. Let me go a little bit further. My picture is awfully messy, and maybe what I'm doing doesn't quite make sense, but I'm going to keep going. Um, here goes. We've just proven that the pink triangles have the same area and are similar. Now, this area scales as the scale factor squared. So if these two triangles are similar with scale factor k, then area changes as k squared. But these have the same area. So the area between these two pink triangles is the same, which tells me that the scale factor between them, k squared, is 1, which means k is 1. That actually, these two pink triangles are not just similar, they're congruent they have scale factor 1. Since they have scale factor 1, we have now proven that, that point P is actually at the midpoint of any line going through it. Oh my gosh, mess, mess, mess. Let's draw the, here's a pair of opposite sides which we, have, which we have proven are parallel. Here's my special point P. We have now proven that any line, pair of lines going through them, must give parallel lines and we've proven these two triangles are similar with scale factor 1 which means that actually this length equals this length and this length equals this length. So these points P's are actually going through the midpoint. So now I think I've completely gotten it that we've now proven that the line through P that goes through here must still stay on this line Vice versa, the line at this end going through P must end at the line that can't go around a corner. Ditto this way. Everything's going through midpoints. These triangles are congruent. This length is all equal to this length. So for a polygon to have the property that there exists a point P, such that any line through it cuts into two parts of equal area, must have the property that there are well-defined opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. <sighs> There's a little bit of work. We should do the converse. Suppose I give you a shape with opposite sides that are congruent and parallel. You do need to prove it has this special property. And it's actually not too hard to prove it. And let me just give a quick idea. So here's a shape. So if these are congruent and parallel, then I claim there's a special point P that works. And how to find that point is connect these lines. Da -da 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 -da. I claim where those lines intersect, that's your special point P. And I bet you can go off you go and prove that everything is working right now. All right, now, here's an interesting question. 
I've stuck with polygons. If a polygon has the property that it cuts, has this area cutting in half property, then it must have opposite sides congruent and parallel. But what about curved sides? For example, oops, we know that circles have this property. That's not a very good circle. Let me draw a good circle. Do, 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 do. There is certainly a special point P that any, any line through the center of the circle cuts it into two parts of equal area. In fact, you can get quite funky. Circles not, need not be the only shape. What if I pulled my circle apart woo, and drew this line and this line? I claim this shape too has the property of, of this cutting in half property, which makes me wonder. Here's a real research question. Can you just tell me the whole class of shapes with curved edges this time that have this area cutting in half property? We can get these sort of weird ovaloid things. They work. Are there other things with circular sections that are straight edge, edges for, for boundary, point, boundary edges? How about non-circular parts? Uh, does the curvature have to be constant for this property? Now we're talking about research. So the question is not just polygons cutting any shape in half. What's the ultimate answer to this ultimate question? Now we're in real research territory. Have fun.